have a new filter design I'd like to share. I like the old design look of it, but there's just too much space inside. There was so much surface area that it was easy to breathe through, even if it's a strong filter, but with so much space, the exhaled air just wouldn't escape, ended up not getting enough oxygen. So the new design has less space inside, still plenty of space to keep the front of the mask away from the mouth, and still enough surface area to make it easy to breathe through even a very high MERV filter, but not too much space. Another major change here is the nose pads, which really helps seal off that area around the nose without any wire, and keeps from fogging up the glasses and makes the filtering more effective. Still have the single connection point to go around the back of the head. You could probably hook something up for around the ears. Personally, I like going around the back of the head. The design has these parts. It has an outside top from cheek here to cheek here. The nose pad wraps over wraps over. If you weren't going to do the nose pads, the edge would be here, and that would be reversible. You could use this for both the inside top and the outside top. But with the nose pads, they're separate. This is the outside top pattern. And the outside bottom pattern. No seam allowances are included on these. So uh, I used a quarter inch seam allowance on the outside bottom, and I used a quarter inch seam allowance along this edge of the outside top and a half inch along here so that I could wrap that around the seam allowance of the uh, bottom and, and tuck it away in there. For the inside, uh, the, like I said, the inside top could be the same as the outside top if you're going to do something reversible. I really like the nose pads, especially because I wear glasses. And so it's, it's wider to give enough fabric to be able to bunch it up here and make these nose pads. Uh, the inside bottom. This comes in a little deeper on the inside bottom just to make sure that it doesn't show. If you're going to do a reversible mask, you'd want to use the same inside bottom and outside bottom. But if it's not reversible, then might as well keep that tucked away. There's facing for the bottoms in there. You only need a seam allowance along this edge of the facings. The others are just raw because they're tucked away in there. Not a problem. You can see inside is the, the filter can be replaced. The facing is not quite as wide as the bottoms. It only comes to here just to try and reduce how many layers of material are having stitching at the same spots. And that covers it. This is the new design. I'm quite happy with it. I've turned it inside out and removed the filter. And you can see how this works with the pattern, the, the dash line on the pattern cut there. And then this becomes the pattern for the outside top of the filter. No seam allowance necessary along the side against the face. Seam allowance needed on the side that's going to connect to the bottom. Again, the outside bottom also has a dash line cut on the dash line. And you have your pattern for the bottom of the filter. Got my bottom piece and my top piece, right sides facing. Line up the line here, the line there. I've got notches at all the corners so that I'll be able to make the corners. So now it's just a matter of sewing from here to here, and then from there to there, and then from there to there, and finally from there to there, so it'll be all together. Facing, unless there's no seam allowance on these edges because that's just going to sit inside and I'm just not worried about it. I'm just going to attach it along here to this. Face to face, line that up, line that up, and just so. That's good enough. Okay, 
So I've got my iron-on interfacing, the cheek pads for what's going to be the outside. I've got the outside, inside the inside at the moment. And it took me a while to do it, but I finally got these pins in place. A pin in the middle, lined up. The two lines are here at this corner here, so that the lines are parallel and everything's matched up. And over here, and it's a little tricky, but matching them up so that they're also the lines are parallel and goes through here. And this other midpoint here, there's a little bit of bunching on the inside side compared to the outside. The outside's going to be smooth. The inside might occasionally have a tiny bit of bunching. That's good because that way we get most of the stuffing patting the nose on that side and with the front face smooth. Next I will use a little needle and thread to hand baste along here in between the line and the edge. And when I get that in place, I'll take the pens out, sew with the machine along the line, and then I'll remove the basting. If there's going to be bunching, I try to focus the bunching in the area that's in the midpoint between the nose ridge and the cheek pad and keep the area right at the nose ridge especially as flat as possible because that should just rest flat on the nose. We're not going to try and get any stuffing in there. And then this area over here is where we want to have more of the stuffing. Okay, I finished the hand basting. So this from here to here, a little tight and now it's nicely lined up all the way along. And I can remove all of them. I'm here, I can continue around and I'll come back and get the other side later. Alright, so as I'm coming this way, I need to make sure that my facing is totally out of the picture. Line these up over here out of the way. I already notched there. I'm going to make sure I stay inside from my notch. See how my alignment is. Looking good. I want the um, seam allowance out on the inside and the outside. There we go. It's all pointed out in a way. It's all double checking my alignment. It's all lined up great. So now I can come on over. And now I'm starting to overlap with the area where that facing is. I'm just going to go for half an inch or so. And I stop. I'm just going to do a little rewind here too just to make sure that that's really on good. Before I sew this side, Finish this off around this way. I do need, want to remove that basting. So I'm just going to let that thread work its way through there. Voila. Basting thread is gone. So now I'm going to work and stitch all through here. Set that up. So just stop stitch right there come around through here and through there. Now that I've attached the inside and the outside, I can turn it inside out through the remaining gap that puts the right side out. And that gap is the space through which the filter will eventually be placed. Next step is going to be to work on the nose pads and I'll move on to that now. I've found the center and I'm placing a short seam on each side of the center to keep the stuffing from getting to the very middle of the nose ridge. We only want the stuffing on either side. We're going to give ourselves access to the inside. Just this layer right here. And without using the stop, we're just going to come across here not like that, so we can do gathering, and then do that again over here, so we can do gathering. Okay. 
Nice nice dish, go for it. Alright, first one. I'm gonna hold this out later, so I'm gonna make a whole ladder. I'm struggling to make sure they're going. One layer of them. It's nice and middle. Um, I'm gonna go plenty of thread. So that in this area here, I can indicate that I want to gather. Shouldn't actually finish this up until I've done this side, but I'm not going to video me doing the same thing on this side. So anyway, this is the idea. We can gather here. Once we've gathered, then we'll be able to stitch along on this side between here and here. And this side will bunch it up a little bit, which will provide plenty of fabric for this to fill with stuffing later. Camera battery died, but I'm back. And we have fabric gathered here and here. And we have this seam where that's together all the way out. And now we just want to go straight through both, straight across, somewhere over here to over here, leaving enough room for the stuffing to come in that way. Make our nose. Okay, and so now we have these little pockets for padding. Oh, and we want to remove this now that we're done with it. We can just slide this out, and slide this out, and you can see we've got a little bit of gathering here, just not as flat as on the other side, so we have room. And on the inside, there should be a couple loose threads in there to get rid of. Okay, so I've got some stuffing material here. This is sleeping bag insulation that I happen to have around. And so I'm going to take a piece of this and I'm not sure the best way to get this in here, so I'm just going to do this. Go around. That's right there. No more. I'm going to take this. And that. I'm just working. It's coming. So I'll take it. 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 I'll and it turns a corner right here, goes that way. There we go. Yeah, it's... Like that. And we still need the filter. So for the filter, I used an HVAC filter. This is a 20 by 25 by 1 inch filter, which has enough material for many, 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 many masks. And it has um, wire in here. But fortunately, some of the filters, the wire is built into the pleated part, and I found that really difficult to work with. Needed Ten snips and it was kind of a pain. Uh, this I still needed ten snips to kind of get rid of the wire, but it was only attached significantly along the edge. So I just kind of ripped it along the edge, and then this came came out. Plenty of material. There is an arrow on the edge of the cardboard showing which direction airflow is intended. So this side is where the air was supposed to go in the less clean air. So I was going. I plan to put this on the outside facing. So I trimmed off the excess, so it's just at the filter line. Put these down on here, traced around the outside, and just in the little edge here, wrote bad on this side, because this is the bad air side, the side for the big particles. So the side's going to face outward. The underside will be the side that faces inward. Again, right there. Up right there, I marked where the corners are going to be for when I'm so. Okay, so like with the fabric, I've got the Corners notched, because if they're not notched, we're not going to be able to bend the corners. Um, but unlike with the fabric, where we did this or this, so this we're going to overlap it because this stuff is not flexible. So we're just going to line up the line, stack the lines on top of each other. And so, but it is so not flexible that I was not able to get the filter material to fold over while I was sewing. So I would have to do one little segment, finish off, take it out, turn around and work the opposite direction for the next segment. Take it off, turn it around, work the opposite direction again, until eventually uh, I'd sewn the last segment from the edge toward the inside. I'm not even close to the line but it does seem to have made the right shape and I tried to pick a direction for the ridges of the accordion 
completed filters so that try to get some extra stability to the filter. So now I take this and fold it a little bit, open it up here and put that inside and let it expand out to its full size inside and cover the filter with the facing down in here. Okay, so we're done. Not sure what that's called, but we've got it on the edge. If I had done this as a reversible, if I'd not done the nose pad and made it reversible, I would have put it on the very edge that would be, could be connected from either side. I probably would have used this type instead, done on the very end. But um, this seems to be the best place for distributing the force to hold the mask on. Um, got hooks on here. This is eighth inch shock cord. I uh, made a sleeping bag recently, so using some leftover parts. Um, this is great for adjustment. And I like the fact that, that um, we can have multiple masks and we went someplace where, oh, this needs to sit in the sun for a couple days, so get a different mask and, um, and hook it onto that one instead. And here's, I guess here's my son's. Um, I don't have a matching mask. Made one for my mom. And last but not least, here is a mask I made for my wife. Her face is a little smaller, so the mask is a little smaller. I printed the pattern, reduced, so that the one inch line on the pattern only measured 7 eighths of an inch on the printed piece of paper, and then made the mask accordingly. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching, and be safe out there.